Let's study 9th standard ICAC chapter 15, Biology, Hygiene. Hygiene is a key to a healthy life. The definition of health states that it is a condition of the body of a person who depicts physical, mental, social and emotional fitness. So it's a misconception that health relates only to the absence of disease, physical disease. Even if physically you are fit and fine, but if you are mentally unsound or socially unfit, you are not healthy. Hygiene is defined as a science and practice of maintaining good health, which could be personal hygiene or social hygiene. Both are required for a healthy life. If even one of them is missing, we may fall sick. Personal hygiene can be maintained in the following ways. First, cleanliness. Hands and skin. We must wash our hands regularly. We touch various objects throughout the day. And if we don't wash our hands before we eat food or if we pick our nose with dirty hands, then the germs may enter our body and cause disease. We should wash our hands with soap after using the toilet. Regular bath is very important to keep our skin clean and to open up the sweat pores. That would help to remove the body, body odor Sweat does not have the bad odor, but the bacteria which thrive in the sweat, in the armpits, etc., they produce a body odor. Next, undergarments and handkerchiefs must be washed daily. Hair must be kept clean frequently by washing and combing. If you don't want the hassles of combing, keep your hair very short, like a military cut. This applies to both boys and girls. After all, health is more important than fashion. This way, lice won't grow on your scalp and hair. Teeth, we should brush teeth twice a day, once after dinner and once before breakfast in the morning. And even after lunch, we should rinse our mouth, preferably with a mouthwash. And if we eat sweets and chocolates or anything sweet, then we should again rinse our mouth so that the food particles don't get stuck in our cavities. Because if it stays there for many hours, then the bacteria will grow on them and they will release an acid which will corrode the enamel of our teeth and can even cause gum infections. Caries are also called cavities. As much as possible, we should breathe by nose because the hair in our nostrils trap the dust particles and prevent them from entering a respiratory system and the dust particles may have some germs on it. Also when we blow the nose, we should use a handkerchief and while sneezing, we should cover our nose with a handkerchief or with an elbow fold if it's urgent. Eyes must be cleaned as well, otherwise it can lead to infections such as trachoma and conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is the redness of the eye when the conjunctiva the outermost layer of the eye but it's not a part of the eye that becomes infected and no wearing glares will not prevent it from get spreading or looking into the eyes of a person who is suffering from conjunctivitis won't cause the disease never share towels with others even in the same family you can cancel the point about kajal Ears also should be kept clean. Wax production is very normal and good for the ears. There's no need to intentionally remove it on a regular basis. There is no need to use earbuds. What you can do is, while having a bath, just put some water in the ear and gently clean it with the towel. That's enough. And never put any sharp pointed object in the ear because it may injure the eardrum and you may go deaf. No matter how pleasurable it may feel, don't insert anything in your ear. Physical exercise is very important for a healthy life. So gym exercise is not required for children and adolescents. Just going for a walk, cycling, swimming or playing sports is good enough physical exercise. Apart from making your bone and muscle structures strong, it improves blood circulation and lymph circulation. So it Im Im even improves your immunity. Rest and sleep are very important to maintain our brain, mind and our body. 
but the number of hours required to be slept varies from age groups to age groups for example adults require 6 hours of continuous undisturbed sleep teenagers may require 8 hours of sleep anything more than that is sheer laziness healthy habits going to bed at late hours is not good or immediately after taking dinner is not good you should not lie down immediately after eating food wait for at least 1 hour your bowels should be cleared every day preferably in the mornings so that your large intestine is clean tobacco should be avoided at all cost because it is very injurious to health and may even lead to cancer if you need a stimulant you can have a cup of coffee now and then but taking too many stimulants like many cups of tea or coffee a day is harmful over the long run even sedatives some kind of drugs or alcohol they may be very harmful over the long run living rooms should be well ventilated for fresh air and sunlight so that we have enough oxygen supply and sunlight kills germs and even the spores of germs now let's talk about social hygiene and sanitation it's very important that public places such as schools offices laboratories cinema halls are kept clean by the respective authorities even eating places like hotels restaurants and roadside dhabas should be clean and free of flies otherwise there may be an epidemic public drains and garbage must be covered and some kind of disinfectant like bleaching powder or lime which is quick lime calcium oxide or slake lime calcium hydroxide must be frequently sprinkled so that it does not stagnate and there is no breeding of mosquitoes there the municipalities must ensure that there is germ free drinking water to all the households and the sewage that is all the waste water coming from households as well as offices should be disposed efficiently without call it causing much pollution next control of disease carriers called vectors so vector can be any agent which acts as an intermediate carrier of a pathogen for example malaria is not caused by mosquitoes it is spread by mosquitoes malaria is actually caused by a pathogen called plasmodium it is a protozoan it's a germ but it is carried by a vector called the female anopheles mosquito so we should eradicate all these insects in order to eradicate the disease the house fly for example it is a natural scavenger it does help to clean up all the waste material in the garbage yet it is often called the public enemy number 1 because it spreads diseases like dysentery cholera typhoid etc in what manner you ask well there are four manners it has a hairy body so it's the hair and its legs they pick up filth when they sit on garbage it sticks to their legs and this filth may have germs and then when they sit on our food and they rub their legs and this filth these particles fall on the food they're so tiny we can't even see them so the germs are then ingested by us accidentally and that's how the disease is spread another method is by pouring out saliva house flies can't chew their food they pour their saliva through their proboscis that is their mouth they release the saliva to digest the food so that they can suck it but in the process they may contaminate the food even when they vomit food regurgitation then too the food may be contaminated and then we eat that food and get diseased if there are germs present the third method is they are excreta that is your waste so when they sit on the food and they excrete and these things are so small that we cannot notice it but it contaminates the food and fourth method is direct transmission of germs so if you are sleeping and they have sat on an infected person's eye and then they sit on your eye then germs of trachoma and conjunctivitis may spread that way and you may get the disease so how do we control the population of the house fly first of all eliminate all the breeding places we know that they survive on filth so animal and human excreta should be removed regularly and disposed of and they should be buried in the earth so that there is enough heat produced in the earth because of decomposition that kills all the maggots 
that is the larvae of these houseflies, the baby houseflies. Another method is by spraying the breeding places, the filthy areas with some insecticides. DDT is no longer used because it causes pollution and it enters the food chain and harms human health as well. And third way is avoidance. Keep food well protected and covered. Even cover sleeping babies with nets. This way, houseflies won't spread diseases much. The next vector will talk about uh, mosquitoes and the diseases they cause. The female Anopheles mosquito spreads malaria in human beings, even in monkeys and birds, because if they suck the blood of a person suffering from malaria, then the plasmodium germ, it's a protozoan, not a bacteria or a fungus or a virus, it's a protozoan, like amoeba, eulina, paramecium, that's a class of microbes called protozoa. So that enters the body of the mosquito and when this mosquito bites us, then these germs enter our blood and then we suffer from malaria. But remember, only females suck blood. Next, Culex mosquito. They spread elephantiasis or filariasis. They spread a nematode worm called Usheraria, which causes swelling in our limbs, especially our legs. They become as huge as an elephants. That's why it's called elephantiasis. It's a very painful disease because this worm enters our lymph nodes and it swells. A third mosquito, Aedes, it spreads yellow fever and dengue through a virus. This is the mechanism of how the disease spreads, which I just explained. Now, how do we control the mosquitoes? First of all, we can spray some insecticide over ponds and marshy places, any place where there can be stagnant water because they lay their eggs in stagnant water. Elimination of the breeding places altogether. For example, here in Mumbai, there is a law which prevents households from having any stagnant water in their premises. If the municipality discovers such a place on the terrace or otherwise, then the family is fined. Spraying on stagnant water. So if we pour kerosene over it or any greasy oil, it forms a layer on top of water because it floats in water and that way all the larvae and the pupae will die because they won't be able to breathe in kerosene. Biological control, well we can introduce a fishes like Gambusia in breeding places because they eat the larvae of mosquito. A new technique has been developed. Certain mosquitoes are being bred in the laboratory such that they will go and reproduce with the normal mosquito and they will help to decrease the population of mosquitoes. This is through genetic engineering. Cockroaches. They are found in households, in manholes, in sewers. They also survive and thrive on filth. They can be found even in kitchens and cupboards and wardrobes. They spoil everything. Food, clothing, etc. They might be spreading viral diseases which cause cancer. So we should spray insecticides in their bleeding, breeding places. Rats is cancelled. By the way, rats may spread some dangerous diseases like the plague. Now, contamination of water and waterborne diseases. This is the definition of contamination. It's unwanted entry of disease causing germs into drinking water or edible foods. Clean and germ-free drinking water is very important for the health of the public. But how does it get contaminated, the potable water, that is the drinking water? First of all, if the sewage is not disposed properly, if it leaks into the soil or it enters the underground water supply, then it will pollute the drinking water. Next, people defecating or urinating near water bodies may cause contamination. Animal wastes and the washings of animals from dairies, poultry, animal sheds, contaminates water bodies because all the wastewater flows into the nearby water bodies. Even industrial waste and agricultural waste, which contains chemicals, may enter the harmful may enter the water body and cause harmful diseases. For example, industrial wastes may contain mercury, which causes abnormalities in nervous system. Tannery wastes from leather industries contain some bacilli bacteria which causes anthrax. Anthrax is a disease which afflicts animals and humans both. It's dangerous. Pesticides such as DDT, which may be used in agriculture, 
may enter the water bodies and cause hormonal imbalance in humans and even cancer. And if there are excess of fluorides in drinking water, it causes tooth disorders, bone disorders, and it may even cause neuromuscular disorders. Fluorides are essential minerals for our body, but excess of them is harmful. Now let's study three common waterborne diseases. Cholera. It is caused by a bacteria called Vibrio cholerae, which infects the intestinal tract. So we will have severe diarrhea then, that's loose motions and vomiting. So if we lose a lot of water, obviously it will lead to dehydration, that is deficiency of water in our body. So we should drink plenty of ORS, that is oral rehydration solution, like electrol powder or salt and sugar water to maintain the balance of sugar and salt as well as water in our body. Now if you have severe dehydration, then your kidneys won't be able to produce urine and without urination, the urea will accumulate in the blood because there is no way to excrete it out apart from urinating. And then if urea levels become very high, it can cause death. But how does the germ spread? Through contaminated water and through flies, even through dirty handlers. Next, dysentery. Well, it can be either bacillary dysentery caused by bacteria or amoebic dysentery caused by amoeba. Bacillary dysentery is caused by a bacteria called Shigella. It is quite common among children. Its symptoms include diarrhea, intestinal pain and mild fever. Antibiotics can be used to treat it. And if there is an epidemic, we should drink boiled water in that area. And even the food should be kept covered so it's not contaminated by flies. So these are two ways in which the disease spreads. Amoebic dysentery is caused by a protozoan called Entamoeba histolytica. This is how it looks. You can see how it ingests our blood cells. This is a pseudopodium, it falls feet. It can change its shape to move around and to engulf and ingest particles around it. Even our WBCs behave that way. So how does this organism enter our body? Through contaminated food and water again and they infect our large intestines lining. Finally, hepatitis. There are three main types, that is hepatitis A, B and C. Hepatitis means inflammation or swelling of the liver. Hepatitis A is highly infectious. It is transmitted through contaminated food and water. Hepatitis B and C are passed through blood and other body fluids, especially through syringes and transfusion equipment. That is why in clinics and hospitals, these should be disposed after one time used or thoroughly disinfected. The symptoms of hepatitis are body ache, yellow eyes, yellow urine because of bile pigments from the liver in excess, enlarged liver. Prevention, hepatitis vaccine, but note that hepatitis A vaccine won't protect you against hepatitis B and vice versa. And proper hygiene is required. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.